Well, are you looking forward to this year's election or dreading it? The spectacular success of Donald Trump in last year's US presidential campaign means the traditional and mostly polite rules of political engagement might no longer apply. New Zealand-born Jeremy Waldron is a professor of legal and political philosophy at New York University and has been watching the dramatic changes in American political rhetoric, also around the upheaval with the Brexit vote in Europe, and uh, he joins us now. Good morning. Good morning, Todd. It's good to be here. seen a lot of divisive politics, particularly still going on in the States and around the issues uh, with Brexit. What are the things that have led to that, or more importantly, what are the things that might have avoided things becoming so black and white and divided? Yeah, the things that have led to it have been an upsurge in rage and resentment, and that um, coming sweeping into the political system and making a difference to the prospects for anybody who wants to be civil and cooperative in politics. And how to get rid of it, I don't know. I mean, it's the sort of thing that you baby step into and then suddenly there's a slide into a collapse of civility. And I'm not sure that there's any particular magic way of getting back to civility in but politics. how do you perhaps stop it happening? Is there an easy way to, to stop that kind of rage emerging? Well, there's some ways you can make it much worse. And, and so um, you should stop talk of impeachment, in my view. You should stop... Um, people walking around with signs saying, not my president. You should stop uh, the blurring of the line between governing and campaigning. You should try to, to uh, work with the ordinary alternation in and out of office, in office, then out of office, that characterizes a healthy democracy. Those are all things that, that can make things a little bit better. There's no particular way of stopping the emergence of rage, anger, and resentment if that is actually a product of people's living conditions. And so, probably it's healthy that that comes forward. So we sit in New Zealand and shake our heads at the ongoing Trump circus and, and still probably the Brexit vote. I mean, are we as a, as a people, can we consider ourselves immune from that kind of rage that led to that division or are we at the same risk of anyone else? I don't know. I think there is a risk in every democracy. New Zealand is a pragmatic um, country and, uh, uh, of course, a very small country. And you don't have the, the space for people to separate and become incomprehensible to each other that maybe we're seeing in the United States. There have been periods of New Zealand politics where civility has declined sharply. I think of the period in the 1970s uh, in the Muldoon era and in the reaction to the Muldoon administration in things like Citizens for Rolling, where there was a serious decline of civility among politicians. But my impression now in New Zealand is that there's no particular problem of this sort. When you look at the United States, one of the big questions is, you know, how do you put those two parts of the country back together again? I mean, is it clear whether that can be done and whether that's, you know, is it now a generation thing? I think it is a generation thing. It's certainly there's been a lot of political, educational, lifestyle segregation of the population and people have moved to be living alongside like-minded people. And that's, that's a, a big move and you, you can't legislate that to stop that. All you can ask is for people to make an effort to go out of their way to talk to others with whom they're not particularly comfortable. So that discourse you talked about in the case of Brexit, was there not? You would have thought there was enough debate about the issues there before the vote, but was it, was it done in a combative way? The Brexit debate was, was particularly combative, and I think there were voices that were missing, voices that could convey the passion without the, uh, the viciousness of the debate. I think people would, simply didn't expect the votes to go the way they did. It wasn't that it was a violent campaign or a particularly vituperative one, but it, it, it had an edge of viciousness which is not normally seen in British politics. Does MMP, which New Zealand has and those two countries we talked about doesn't, does that soften the debate in a, in a useful way? I think it works in both directions. It softens the debate by requiring coalition politics as business as usual. Uh, in politics. On the other hand, it empowers parties to think of themselves as single issue parties rather than broad coalitions that would bring and bundle all the policy issues together. Jeremy Waldron, thanks for joining us this morning. He's in New Zealand to deliver Maximum Institute's 10th annual Sir Graham, sorry, Sir John Graham lecture with support from the New Zealand Law Foundation. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thanks.